Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move. And for today's episode in our Tactics and Team Guide series, we've got um, Marseille in France, and uh, we're just going to try and sort out and see how we can get the best out of this team, out of the squad in this uh, pretty much one-sided league. I guess you you can call it. Uh, Monaco, of course, capable of competing in real life, but God knows how this game would end up. Uh, you know, match engines and whatnot is different. But anyways, let's have a look at the squad and see what we can do. So as you can tell, got a couple more players than the, the last couple of squads. We had to look at uh, Leon and um, Monaco as well. Both were a little bit short on players, but they seem to have a decent amount of players. 23, a couple of loanies, of course, which, is, which have helped them. Um, what was that? Six loanies. Uh, Gomez, of course, from Swansea. I'm sure everyone knows him from his little celebration he did with Swansea. A couple of decent players, though. Thorvin, maybe, as well. Um, he's on loan from Newcastle, but he will be joining permanently, apparently. I didn't even have a clue about that. Um, but yeah, so, so, you know, at least they've got the numbers for it. And the point is to try and see whether we can get a squad together decent enough to challenge, uh, you know, for Champions League spots, at least. that They are expected to end in uh, fourth place, I think. There you go. So that should give them Champions League, I think, maybe. Have a look at the rare registration actually. Nope, fourth place is just Euro Cup. So, you know, I guess challenging for the third place might be decent enough. But, anyways, let's uh, first let's see which, which of the staff we can actually trust in terms of their judgment of ability. Uh, of course, you can do better than your assistant manager here. I'm not saying you can replace it, but you could find people better with uh, more judging ability, maybe improve on your head of youth development. But for now, We'll be using our uh, goalkeeping coach actually, because he's got a bit of better judging ability. Stefan Kassar, you can you can mix with Frederick as well, um, just to see whether the judgment is correct. So first things first, of course, sort out the squad in eleven, the first the best eleven players at the club, and try and make a team out of them. See if you can include as many of them as possible. So we've got a defensive midfielder here in Lasana Diara. Of course, everyone knows the former Real Madrid man. Um, incredible! He's even the Chelsea former Chelsea man. That's <laughs> that's how bad I've been. Um, yeah, but defensive midfielder, centre midfielder as well. Uh, wingers in Cabela and uh, Thorvin Cabela can play advanced playmaker as well. Centre back, another centre midfielder and a defensive midfielder there. Another centre back. The reason why I'm checking it one by one is sometimes they say they can only play in one position, but they're decent enough in other positions, and you have to consider sometimes moving around. And another set of wingers. And a fullback. So it looks like we're going to have to play whatever formation we play. We have to play wingers and possibly defensive midfielders. You've got one striker there. So it looks like, um, well, set up on a 4 3 1. The assistant manager says that as well, but I think you could even go for 4 2 3 1. Now, I think that's decent enough. It's really up to preference because I think. I'm sure Lasan Diara will be alright playing in centre mid as well. Uh, I'm a bit more tempted to play a 4-2-3-1 now. Hmm. You know what? I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think when you play this 4-2-3-1 you can play a bit more direct and we'll play the other 4-2-3-1 as the possession based side. So as you know we play both, we, we try and make a tactics for both a possession based and a direct based style of play and we'll try doing that with both. So just to give you an example, uh, let's say you'd be playing attacking 4-2-3-1 on DM wides, uh, to play directly you'd play a higher tempo of course, more direct passing, roam from positions and be more expressive. But as I always say in my episodes, this is, these are just my preferences. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually um, put your instructions down for and uh, in terms of playing more directly you can still keep at a higher tempo of course stay on attacking you could play counter as well um, but just for the sake of these you know Marseille being one of the top teams in uh, Ligue 1 uh, will be sticking with attacking just for argument's sake um, but yeah higher tempo more direct passing being more expressive can help you don't really necessarily need roam for positions pass into space running a defense hit early crosses clear ball to flanks would all help uh, you can even stay on your feet to try and keep your team shape. You can close down less and 
play a slightly deeper line in, the, in your attempts to try and draw out your position and hit them on the counter. Uh, and you can of course go even more wider to play as direct as possible. Now, things like playing wider or you know, sorting out your defensive line and closing down the line, even staying on your feet, not completely necessary. You could even do without um, hitting early crosses, for example, and passing into space. The really key instructions I would say here is high instruction, higher uh, tempo, sorry, more direct passing, running your defense and clearing the ball to flanks. That would be perfect. Being more expressive helps as well. But yeah, again, this is just how I like to keep it simple, just for instructions. Otherwise, there's too many. So for the possession based one, you'll definitely want to be on control. You can play on counter and even standard. Um, you, you know, you might be tempted to switch to attacking to try and get a winner or to unlock the side. But technically for um, possession based size, control, standard or counter are your best bets. And again, I like to keep it simple once more. So lower, shorter passing, run for positions and be more expressive. But once more, if you are the type of a manager who likes to have uh, a lot of more instructions, you can get rid of being more expressive, you can retain your possession, you can play out of the defense, you can work the ball into the box, and um, let's see what else you can do. You can definitely play a higher line, you can use the offside trap to help that, you can close down more, you can even get stuck in if you're not worried about getting too many yellows or whatnot. Play narrow to try and bring your players closer together, and I think that's pretty much it but if you really wanted one more extra you can probably look for the overlap in the hopes that your fullbacks will you know obviously overlap and uh, unlock some type defenses but once more just like i mentioned before i like just to keep it simple and um we'll do that here so now it's the matter of who to play and where so this 4-2-3-1 you definitely have to play a central midfielder on the fence and a deep line playmaker on support that's probably your best bet in a 4-2-3-1 because you don't want to get exposed in this little space here and because you're dedicating so many attackers in this you know in the higher positions up the field you're really risking getting caught on the counter so this is your best bet for midfield they have to be a bit more defensive than in other formations um and my best i think probably cabela will be playing him in advanced playmaker position instead because we've got too many wingers so you, your best bet is playing as Van Plimico on attack and uh, let's see your Thorvin is comfortable as an inside forward he's got decent finishing and decision making for as well as the vision so he's, he can play as a winger I guess but he's better off being an inside forward I, th I think um, so I mean inside forward here and that would mean a wing back to match him and then that would leave the left wing. So unfortunately, Bonasar will have to play back up. Um, but again, Romain's in just for quite a while, so you might want to play Romain, uh, the, not Romain, sorry, Sar as the left winger for a while, as an inside forward maybe. Um, but yeah, you can play Romain on left wing as a winger, so we'll keep that as this. Let him play as a winger on support. And we'll let in place and inside forward on attack and the wing back on support and there you go that's your wingers your midfield sorted and that just leaves us with the strikers and the center back so apparently one of your center backs can play as a ball playing defender it's got decent vision and some decent passing as well so maybe you could do you know with the extra um i guess man to unlock the defenses or you know the lower teams of the team of the lower teams of the league rather uh and that lead what that leaves us with should be your striker now i was gonna say if you want to play high line you could possibly play one of your goalkeepers as sweeper but they don't seem too comfortable with it so you're better you're better off playing normal goalkeeper now the striker is an issue because you do have a, he's only an issue when you play uh, a possession based side because target man is definitely gomez is um gomez is his uh, best um role uh, even though he doesn't have too much aggression he does have things such as jumping reach strength and heading uh, but it looks like maybe you should just play him a complete forward on support. You do want to play him on a support role without a doubt. So any of the, any roles that you feel comfortable with. Um, but it looks like your best bet here is probably complete forward on support. He's not the best complete forward. But he should be able to get the job done. Remember you don't really actually have any strikers at the club. Both your strikers are lone ease. So that might be a place for you to look to improve. But we'll get to that in just a second. And that's just how your squad should look if you're playing a 4-3-1 now should be a little bit different here so you'll play a target man on support because you're going to be trying to play direct 
you'll still have a winger here and a fullback on attack here and you still have an inside forward on attack here and a wing back on support here the difference is your mid your defensive midfielders have to be a bit <laughs> unlike the other formation they have to be a bit more attacking uh, than defensive because they're already in the defensive midfield you know strata I guess if you want to call it position um, so they do need to push up a little bit more you have you should still have one on defense and one on support um, but try and you know play a little bit more of an attacking uh, duo rather we'll have a look in just a second so uh, if we're still playing Thorvin in attacking mid rather it's not Thorvin actually it's Cabela uh, I think you'll have to look for a bit more of a direct style of play so an attacking midfielder on attack which is capable of maybe even a shadow striker doesn't have the work rate or aggression for or the strength but I think he's still decent because his finishing is okay but I would say your best bet is playing him on attack and midfielder on attack so that's your front four sorted and now it's about your defensive midfielder so I think it's not going to be too much of a difference we'll play Diara um, as a defensive midfielder on defend and that leaves William playing as a deep line playmaker on support or a roaming playmaker on support. Now it really depends. He's a bit more comfortable playing as a deep line playmaker on support. Um, but yeah, I guess it's really up to your union preferences. So let's say defensive midfield on defend here. And let's say if we do play deep line playmaker on support, that helps definitely with direct play. Deep line playmaker is the best for it. But if you want someone who goes a little bit higher up, you definitely can play the roaming playmaker. You will suit it, he'll go up and he'll come down back to defend as well, so it's kind of perfect. Uh, the registers, are, as it says, suited for possession oriented systems, so you could kind of fit him in just because he's a bit like a deep line playmaker and he does push up, but your better, your, your better bets are your deep line playmaker on support or roaming playmaker. Um, of course, you can also fill in with a ball winning midfielder on support, that's helpful as well. Um, but my best bet is deep line playmaker on support, but you don't have to be too defensive in this formation, I think. Because you already have a defensive midfield, and both of the, even the deep line playmaker is already in defensive mid, or even rather the roaming playmaker. So, it, I would lean to. I think you should alternate a little bit between both. So when you're playing tougher games, play as a deep line playmaker on support. When you're playing easier games, you can afford to push your men on, play the roaming playmaker, and let's leave it as is. But for the sake of that, let's leave it on deep line playmaker on support. So let's see who we should keep and who we should sell. So, uh, as I mentioned in my one more episodes, I like to have 22 players at the squad, so we already have 23. And uh, what I like to do is make sure all my players, of course, are ready for the league. We'll do that in just a second. But what I also like to do is have 22 players. So the first 11 should be players of leading quality for the division, and then or leading ability. And uh, their backups, the backup 11, should all be... They're not, they shouldn't have to be leading, it would be great if they are, but your better bet is to have young players with potential and that way no one's really arguing for the same spot and whatnot. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the squad. I think we did say we'll rely on Stefan, who is supposed to be a good judge of ability, yeah he is. Alright, so he thinks Pele is only good player, so you could do better with him in your goalkeeping department. Uh, your backup, Brice Samba, is not even ready for the vision, but he does have potential to be ready for it. But again, it's a bit of a worry, so for argument's sake, let's send him to reserves. Of course, I don't think you'll have... Oh, you actually do have a lot of money, you have 30 million, so you could do some improvement. Uh, your first <laughs> space to look at is getting a better goalkeeper, and you can keep Pele as a backup or maybe even sell him and bring in someone in with potential. It's really up to you. Your right back spots, you've got uh, Fanny, who's not even ready for the league again, so you can sell him as well, but for argument's sake, let's get rid of him. And you've got Sakai, who's a good player. So again, you can uh, invest in the right back spot, get a good leading right back spot, uh, right back player, and you can keep Sakai as your backup. Or maybe even sell him and bring in the youngster with potential. All Again, all about your preferences. A left back, definitely a place to improve him. Again, the same um, same rule, I guess you could say, is that you can improve him and uh, improve on him and get and, and keep him as a backup if you want or sell him. He's 32 years of age, so I don't think you'll get too much money from him. You're probably better off keeping him as a backup until he um, his contract runs out, maybe, and bringing someone if he does seriously decline afterwards. Your centre-backs, looks like you've got far too many, but I think that's not too much an issue because Gael looks like he's not ready for the team, so we'll send him back to the reserves. 
probably get him on loan. Uh, Rolando, a good player. Um, Thomas, a good player. Doria, just suited for the league. And Karim, suited for the league. It, just, it looks like you already have two first choice players and two backups with potential. So your centre back position looks kind of good. You could trust it for a season or two and see whether, if once these two decline, you sell them quickly and bring in actual leading players. You can actually do it this season as well. And then just keep Doria and Karim as your backups. Uh, or you can try to trust this back line a little bit and see whether Doria and Karim actually fulfill their potentials of being um, you know, really high players for the team. Now in the centre mid spots, you do have an excess, but I'm guessing you can push one of them up into the advanced playmaker spots with uh, Cabela, I think is who we mentioned. So one of these advanced playmakers you could possibly push up, but for the sake of seeing who suits the league, again, safe. I did mention that Marseille seemed to have the numbers, but it looks like I was mistaken. They're certainly tempting fate. Diara, I think, should be leading, and that's one of your key players in the squad. You're going to try. You need to try and play him in his best position, in his best role, to try and get the best out of him. Of course, Diaby is only good, so again, another player you can sell and bring in someone with potential. Uh, William seems to be a decent loanee. Uh, you should probably keep him just for the sake of wages and again for the numbers. Frank's not ready for the league, so we can get rid of him. Uh, Zinedine isn't ready for the league, and he is a loanee. I would recommend pro probably terminating, but apparently you can't, so I can't recommend that anymore. All right, so you can either, you know, just send them to your reserves, uh, or you c it depends if you've actually paid for him or not. Okay, so it looks like you are paying his wages, which is 6k, so if you don't, you're not too bothered about that, I think you can just send them to reserves, let him play there, bring in someone who's better, or you could just make use of him, but for the sake of it, again, he's not ready for leagues, so I'll send him to reserves. Uh, Clinton is ready, decent winger. We've got Thorvin, who's a good winger as well. Uh, Cabela, good. Saw, good. Romain, good. So again, you know, you can improve in the winger in the flanks position again. And uh, if you get leading players and keep the other ones as backup, again, all about preferences, so it's up to you. In the striker position, though, actually, the advanced playmaker, we did speak about Cabela as playing your advanced playmaker. And I think. William's not comfortable. Diaby, if you retrain him as an advanced playmaker, he'll be all right. Former Arsenal man, of course. Um, and then, yeah, you've got Gomez. Of course, he's still already good. He's loney. You might as well keep him as a backup and improve on him. Improve on him. And Aaron's not ready for the league. Um, but again, I can't loan can't be terminated. Pretty sure the window's open, so I don't know what's on about. Sometimes they just say it to make you not be able to get rid of the player. But yeah, if we get if we see these are the players that are ready for the league, and you've only got 16, so that's the worry. So you've got six players to get into the squad with 30 million, so that's, that gives you about five million per, per player, and that doesn't even include wages. So it is an area you know to worry about a little bit, but we'll have a look at the reserves and the under 19s and see if there's anyone ready for the league that you can actually bring into your squad right now. Lucas Ocampos is ready for the league. Um, problem is whether you can actually call him back. You can't recall him from his loan, so that's a bit disappointing. Stefan, he's ready as well. Can you call him back from his loan? Yeah, you can. So you can probably do the centre back, I think, or was that one of the areas you don't need to worry about? No, I think it's one of the areas that you don't need to worry about. Hi guys, and welcome back. And uh, sorry about the little um, blip, I guess you can call it. Uh, there was a technical issue, more like uh, you know, football manager just quitting on me basically, I don't know for some reason. Uh, we were having a look though at the reserves and the under 19s to see if there was anyone ready. Uh, Stefan is ready for the league and he actually can be called back, but unfortunately, um, you know, you're well stocked in the central defence department. So again, it's up to you about preferences, whether you prefer Stefan or one of the other potential youngsters to be included in the squad or not. So about looking at their ability as well as looking at their attributes and seeing who you like a little bit more. Um, but I don't think there's anyone else really. Uh, Jeremy's the next best thing and he's not ready, he's only ready for national football. Um, but yeah, you definitely do have youngsters to keep a look at. Um, 
you know, once more Jeremy is one of them. He is a striker who's a poacher. Uh, that's a bit of a worry because you need someone on a, you know, a support role. But if he does eventually fulfill his potential, of course, you can rebuild your side into a different type of thing. And if, if you wanted to, of course, you could play the 4-4-2, uh, you know, Gomez as a target man and Jeremy as your poacher. That's if, that is, of course, if you actually do keep Gomez. Uh, but you do have Maxime Lopez, who's an advanced playmaker, that would definitely suit your side if you are playing possession-based. Uh, alone or two should do him good, of course. Yusuf Sari, another player to look out for. The winger, uh, he doesn't really suit our side because we are playing with inside forwards. Um, but of course, again, another tactical tweak. There's not too much an issue if he does fulfill his potential. Uh, but I would say try and get him working on his crossing, and even maybe his passing. A little bit of a worry there, uh, but mainly crossing should be more of an issue he is a winger after all uh lucas ocompas of course another one but he's a youngster that's already out on loan 21 years of age so not too many years left in him to try and fulfill his potential but if he does it why not include him we've got other youngsters as well here some decent ones some players should meet expectations some would surpass them of course as always you know sometimes these two and a half star potentials actually end up being your first team squad just because they've improved more than you expect uh, and of course, some of these three and a half stars ones don't even become anywhere near the potential that you expect them. But again, that's just how the game goes. Uh, but yeah, I think that will be all for today's episode. So what we'll be doing now is moving on from France to Italy and, uh, you know, exciting teams as the AC Milan, Inter Milan, uh, Roma, Juventus, um, Fiorentina maybe. We'll have a look at who to do and what to do next. But yeah, again, again keep an eye on next episode. We'll be in Italy. And uh, if you did enjoy today's episode, then definitely please do, as always, hit the like button and subscribe for more daily Football Manager 2017 content. And as always, thank you guys for watching.